Hi there, YouTube. Today's Kingdom song is really kind of boring. When you think about it, it's just like every other Kingdom song, actually. It's got a hard-to-follow melody full of random sharps and flats, some vicious high notes, some clunky lyrics, and basically same shit, different day. This song debuted in 1966 as song number 66, and in 1984, it was song number 129. In the 2009 edition of the songbook, this song was deleted. Now, there were very few changes to this song between 1966 and 1984, but one of the changes is the scriptural references. And I think it's really strange that they have two completely unrelated scriptures as a primary reference for what is essentially the exact same song. Why the change? Well, neither of the scriptures listed is particularly interesting, so I will spare you the details. Let's just get started with verse 1. Now the time to preach God's word, time to let the truth be heard. Really? I can't believe it. In Jehovah's Witness land, is there ever a time not to preach? I don't think so. Never be by threats deterred. Wasn't planning on it. I agree, though, it is high time the truth about the Jehovah's Witnesses was shouted from the rooftops. That's why I'm out here shouting. I mean, singing. <laughs> and guess what? I'm not going to be deterred by any threats either. See, what the Witnesses don't seem to realize is that their cruel and immoral disfellowshipping policy actually pours gasoline on the flames of any opposition that might exist. I mean, basically, guys, my family is creating an activist right now. They are. Keep in mind, I kept my mouth shut for 20 years. For 20 years. And they could have left it alone. But no. Mm -mm. I said it before and I'll say it again. I will not be complicit in my own abuse. You can treat me like dirt if you want to, but I ain't going down without a fight. As opposed to what? And why exactly would theocratic rule be preferable to anything? I mean, every theocratic society I've ever heard of has been a nightmare. So there are a number of countries in the world today that claim to have theocratic governments. And most of them outside the Vatican in Rome are Islamic. We're talking places like Iran, Afghanistan, and Sudan. Now, what do these places have in common? You guessed it, human rights abuses, systematic oppression of women, persecution of gay people, rampant child abuse, religious wars, intolerance on a massive scale. Yeah, sounds great. Let's warn them before it is too late. Let's make sure we warn the really important people first. You know, the ones with the dicks. Pardon me, I'm going to warn all of the people who might consider studying with the witnesses to get out before it's too late. I mean, before they've been love-bombed, isolated from their friends and family on the outside, and brainwashed into good little salespeople for the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Zeal is eagerness and ardent interest in pursuing something or a fervor. So what they're saying here is that we're supposed to demonstrate eagerness for God's house. That doesn't really make any sense. I mean, what does it even mean? Are we saying we want to buy his house? Is this a real estate transaction? I, I don't get it. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, why does the almighty creator of the universe need a house anyway? Now's the time to prove we're true. So why do you need to prove you're true, witnesses? Why in the world would anyone think you weren't? Hmm? Showing love and all we do. Helping God who's old and new. Whether we be funny or be true. Witnesses. Are you showing love in all you do? Are you lovingly failing to report that child molester to the proper authorities? 
Are you lovingly shunning your child if they dare to disagree with you? Are you helping brothers old and new by reporting any gossip you hear about them to the elders immediately so they can be harassed and investigated? You know it's your duty as a Jehovah's Witness. This is so silly, y'all. And the line, whether we be many or be few, is just a throwaway. It has nothing to do with anything else in the verse. Who cares? Yes, we must unselfishly. Okay, let's talk about the word unselfishly here. The word selfish is one that gets thrown out a lot in witness circles. So according to the witnesses, lots of things are selfish. Saving for retirement, going to college, buying ice cream if you're a kid apparently, buying yourself nice things if you're an adult, but that doesn't apply to the governing body apparently. Because in the last JW broadcast, that was some Rolex on Stephen Lett's wrist. I guess they're pretty confident that the vast majority of their viewers have never actually seen a Rolex and wouldn't know a $25,000 watch from a Timex. Some of us do. Other things considered selfish. Too much recreation. If you're a witness, that's read any recreation. Masturbation. And basically anything else that takes time or money or attention away from the watchtower. So basically everything. <laughs> so to be unselfish to them is the opposite of that. Strict moral uprightness, that's in big old quotes, in case you didn't notice, uh, to the point of reporting yourself to the elders for touching your own body, uh, reporting on your spouse for being interested in anything besides missionary position sex, giving all your time and money beyond basic living expenses to the watchtower, working part-time jobs which carry no benefits, no retirement, so that you can pioneer. But it's not just the big things. No, because being unselfish, if you're a witness, means submission in all things. Obedience. Drinking the Kool-Aid without any questions. Say the truth that makes us free. I do. Thanks. The real one, I mean. If he smiled, the Father, we would see. Wait, what? Look, guys. Even you know that you can't actually see God, right? Well, first, because he doesn't exist. And even if he did, your own magic book says that no one can see him and live. So how do you think you're going to see his smile of favor? What, are you going to glimpse a little grin right before the massive aneurysm? Go on. And maintain our full integrity. talked about integrity here before, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. In case you missed it, keeping integrity to a Jehovah's Witness doesn't just mean adhering to that strict moral code. To a Jehovah's Witness, keeping integrity essentially means wholehearted devotion to the organization. Interestingly, in 1966 when this song debuted, the line was, maintain our own integrity. Now in 1984, it became full integrity. And that's interesting to me. I guess they didn't want anybody mistaking their meaning here. They don't want you following your own moral compass. No, no, no. They want you fully involved in the Watchtower organization. They want you to override your own moral compass so that you can follow their commands, no matter how ludicrous, no matter how cruel, no matter how pointless. Now's the time to be brainwashed, folks. actually not bad advice here because I think the final fight is coming but it's not Armageddon guys I think the final fight for the Jehovah's Witnesses will be in a courtroom where there will be eventually a victory for truth and right indeed it's already happening actually it's only a matter of time at this point but of course they meant Armageddon here obviously notice again the music the major key the happy music while they're singing about mass genocide that's, that's a little messed up. And when they say truth and right, they mean themselves as the only survivors. Wow. Talk about narcissism. 
I mean, they're one-tenth of one percent of the full global population, and they think they're the only ones who have the truth and who deserve to live. Arrogant, if you ask me. And what's with the word darksome? I mean, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in this song to me. First of all, because none of the rest of the lyrics have this type of language, and second, because nobody uses words like this. It's the kind of word you expect to hear in some old novella about the prairie or something. It was a darksome night on the range, and Cowboy Bill was loping back toward the Circle K. <laughs> it's just bizarre in this context. But this last line was really my favorite. I think we should all strive to be shining lights. Shine the light of truth and reason on the watchtower underbelly. Expose the lies and the hypocrisy. Call it what it is. Apply logic. Be the alarm clock that wakes people up. It's a scam, guys. Don't fall for it. In due time, we we'll back the dead. Help them feed on Christ the living bread. Here we go again with the zombie apocalypse. What kind of creepy... I mean, the dead are going to come back to life and eat Jesus? When did cannibalism become cool? Especially if he's still alive. I mean, the poor guy can't seem to catch a break. I mean, why does his narcissist father have to scapegoat him every single time? Isn't being crucified enough? No evil will there be to dread. Do you dread evils? I mean, if I'm going to dread something, it's going to be a little more specific, right? Like having to go to a kingdom hall ever again, or being cornered by some well-meaning Jehovah's Witness and lectured about things that are none of their business or that they know nothing about. I don't just dread generic evils. In 1966, the word was demons in this line. And let me tell you, the witnesses definitely dreaded those when I was in. Oh my God. I grew up in the heyday of the demon terror when the Smurf dolls allegedly walked the aisles of the kingdom hall cursing during the meetings. And anything you bought at a yard sale or a thrift store or received as a gift from a worldly person could bring demons right on into your house. And what did those demons do? They caused nightmares. They supposedly made vomiting noises and turned lights on and off. They were said to have made beds vibrate, and certain mentally ill sisters feel that they could not pray. Y'all, I used to be terrified of demons when I was a kid, terrified to the point of panic attacks. But then, one day, I actually started thinking about it, and I had to ask myself, what is so freaking scary about vomiting noises and screwy light switches? Why is everybody so terrified of vibrating furniture? I, I don't... Never in any of the stories whispered between the gossipy sisters did any of these terrifying spirit creatures actually do anything substantial. I mean, a walk and talk and Smurf doll actually sounded pretty cool when it comes down to it. Yes, all these things are what God has said. I mean, that's a bit of a stretch, actually, because there's no proof that God exists at all, much less that he had anything to do with writing the Bible or even what we currently call the Bible is complete or even that it was intended to be packaged together or any of that. And then setting all of that aside, this song focuses on the Jehovah's Witness interpretation of the Bible, which is a stretch on top of a stretch on top of a stretch. I mean, really, guys. Now's the time to 